Greetings programs, I'm Jacko and this is the Gamification, my show where we talk about all the things happening in the world of games, movies, animation and what have you. Well, let's start things off with the first segment I'm calling New News is Good News. There are four items on the news this week that I picked out. The first one, there's a lot of, uh, if, uh, I'll change that to, if you like uh, Viking stuff, uh, but are a family man and don't want to show them all the violence from the TV show Vikings, or the new God of War game if you're playing that, uh, How to Train Your Dragon 3 uh, title and official synopsis has been revealed, and this is from MovieWeb.com. Universal and DreamWorks has revealed the official title and the first synopsis for the highly anticipated animated sequel. The next instalment in the franchise will be titled How to Train Your Dragon The Hidden World. DreamWorks will unveil a sneak peek at the movie at this year's NSC International Animation Film Festival. The Hidden World sounds a lot like a, what, The Lost World, so mm, um, Jurassic Park might have something to deal with. Doubtful though. Dean DeBloy forgive me if I've stuffed your name up, has d directed the previous two How to Train Your Dragon movies, which have been massive hits for DreamWorks Animation. How to Train Your Dragon and How to Train Your Dragon 2 made a combina uh, combined $1.1 billion at the box office. How to Train Your Dragon The Hidden World is being billed as a combination for this series, and we'll see Hiccup and his faithful dragon Toothless coming up against some hard times according to the official synopsis, 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 which reads as follows. As Hiccup fulfills his dream of creating a peaceful dragon utopia, Toothless's discovery of an untamed, elusive mate draws the night fury away. When danger mounts at home and Hiccup's reign as village chief is tested, both dragon and rider make impossible decisions to save their kind. Originally, the sequel was supposed to arrive in theaters on March 18th of this year, but now DreamWorks and, and Universal will, will release How to Train Your Dragon in the Hidden World on March 1st, 2019. I love these films. Uh, they're just like the classic family. Yeah, let's get together, sit back, watch it, have a bit of fun, a bit of fantasy. Um, everyone likes dragons, right? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. If you haven't watched the first two, give them a go. Also, I believe on Netflix still, they have the TV series, which is between one and two, that fills in all of that time gap. Maybe they'll do another TV series for between two and three. News number two, Victoria Mahoney joins Star Wars Episode Nine as franchise's first black female second unit director. This is by Adam Chitwood on Collider Video. Uh, dot com or collider.com it was announced yesterday by do oh, not, not yesterday this is a few days ago honestly um, on Twitter uh, that Victoria Mahoney will be serving as the second unit director for episode 9 making her the first African American woman to serve as a director in any capacity for the Star Wars franchise for those unfamiliar, a second unit director is in charge of a film's second unit, which is mostly reserved for filming stunt sequences and complicated action set pieces. This second unit shoots simultaneously with the first unit, which is comprised of shots involving the principal cast and is overseen by the director. Some filmmakers direct their own second unit, like Christopher Nolan, but on a film as massive as Star Wars, it's impossible to do both. And the second unit on a movie like this is a massive undertaking. Mahoney has directed the CBS pilot Red Line from producers DuVernay and Greg Berlanti. And she has also wrote, produced and directed the film Yelling at the Sky. Joining Star Wars as its second unit director is a massive leap for Mahoney and the kind of opportunity that will open more doors for the filmmaker. This is great. Especially for a movie such as Star Wars, which is very action-based, you know. If she's in charge of uh, taking care of that stuff, this is awesome. And bring more uh, 
coloured people into the franchise is a big thing about the new Disney Lucasfilm um, mandate, I guess you could say. So, it's all positive news. I can't really speak more to that because I'm just a white guy. But, what do you think about that? Let me know. News number three. God, we're smashing through this. Sega is making a mini drive... Oh, sorry. Sony is making a Mega Drive Mini. This is by Tom Phillips at Eurogamer. Sega announced the micro console over the weekend, last weekend, during its Sega FES event, and said it would launch in Japan first, with US and other territories later this year. There's no mention of how many games will be built into the console or what they might be, though. One word of caution, however... The hardware is being handled by At Games, which previously handled the similar similar At Games Mega Drive flashback device, which gained mixed reviews. For what it's worth, At Games has said that this news, uh, sorry, At Games has said this new Sega back device will offer different emulation and additional features. And while the model shown over the weekend has no cartridge slot, At Games has promised that version sold in other country, other territories well that's weird if they're not going to do it in japan first which is their prime um audience i'd say their prime customer base it, it's strange that they wouldn't do some kind of um promotional deal specifically for them But yeah, it's just like the response to uh, like the NES Mini and the SNES Mini. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Sega's kind of had a bit of a mixed bag considering games in their consoles. But what do you think? You, if it, I'm not a big Sega person, so if you've played a lot of Sega stuff, let me know if this excites you. News number four. Patrick Soderlund. EA can't afford another loot box controversy with Anthem. This is from James Batchelor at gamesindustry.biz. Electronic Arts exec and former DICE boss Patrick Soderlund has assured neither Anthem, Battlefield, nor any future EA releases will be mined by the same controversial loot box system originally proposed for Star Wars Battlefront 2. Speaking to The Verge, Soderlund said the Fura, I can't, F-U-R-O-R-E, I can't pronounce that, I'm sorry. The Fura, Furor, surrounding, uh, like, everyone was angry at what happened at Battlefront 2 with the microtransactions. I'll just put it that way, okay? Uh, And it had a, okay, uh, and it definitely had an effect on the publisher and its management likely prompting the recent executive shuffle in which he was named, uh, Patrick Soderlund, was named Chief Design Officer. As well as the Star Wars shooter, Shadow of Mordor and Destiny 2 got some flack for their micro- microtransaction dilemma, but mainly Destiny 2, there wasn't much of an outcry for um, about Shadow of Mordor because the game was fun enough as it was. They could just... You don't need the microtransactions, but Destiny 2, and especially Battlefront 2, they almost made you dependent on that. It's not on. Most notably, there are worries that Bioware's Anthem, a Destiny-like shared world online shooter from the studio behind Mass Effect and Dragon Age, will be rife with monetization. But Sutherland has assured this won't be the case. Quote, we have taken significant steps as a company to review and understand the mechanics around monetization, loot boxes, and other things in our games before they go to market, he said. For games that come next, for Battlefield or for Anthem, players have made it very clear that we can't afford to make similar mistakes, and we won't, end quote. Uh, this is good. Hopefully, well, we'll see, you know. Uh, Hopefully the learning, especially with the stock hit they took from Battlefront 2, from what I re- uh, remember. Uh, they can't really, aff- EA can't afford to make such big mishaps like they did last year. Um, with Anthem, uh, knowing that it's, 
going to have some good riders like Drew Carpishin. I'm sorry if I stopped the name. Drew Carpishin, he wrote, uh, Matt, he was a writer on Mass Effect 1 and 2. Uh, he, he wrote some Mass Effect books. He wrote uh, Knights of the Old Republic, the, the first one, and the Darth Bane trilogy books from Star Wars. And he, he's bloody good. So if he's working on this, on Anthem, I'm very excited and I'm very hopeful for what's going to happen with that game. With the monetization stuff, um, open games like that, it's almost necessary at this point. Games are never finished and they always need that money to help um, keep the servers going, you know? And, uh, yeah, so we'll see. What do you guys think? Do you think EA's... Uh, financial schemes are going to get in the way of this game or do you think it's going to turn out alright? Let me know right into me. Alright, that's it for the news. Let's go on to game chat. Working title. Uh, if you have a better title, let me know. I'd really love to use something different, but this is good enough so far. Haven't heard much rumors because everyone's talking about uh, God of War. And I've just started playing it. I won't do a review until next week, though. So uh, look out for that. I'm gonna. I'll, I'll go pretty in depth, but I'll try not to spoil it. So we'll just go to games out this week. Uh, let's see. Yakuza Six: The Son of Life comes to PS4. Don't Starve Mega Pack comes to Xbox One and PS4. Wild Guns Reloaded comes to. The the Nintendo Switch. Guard of Wonderland VR goes to PC. Pinball FX3 Star Wars The Last Jedi um, comes to PS4, PC and Xbox One. Neo Geo Power Sparks 2 PS4. I Hope. So it's I apostrophe Hope. Uh, Xbox One. Manticore Galaxy on Fire on the Nintendo Switch. Dimension Drive, PS4. Neo Geo, Neo Geo Samurai Showdown 4 on the PS4 and Xbox One. God of War, obviously, that's out. That just came out a couple of... Uh, the 20th. And everyone that I've heard from, all, everyone, all the critics, reviews... T it's game 9s and 10s, I'll just say that, okay? If you have if you haven't played it yet, go play it. It's it's one of the best games of the year, I reckon. It's it's in contention for game of the year. Uh, Nintendo Labo Toy Con Variety Kit One and Two. That's for the Switch, obviously. Wonder Boy The Dragon's Trap, PS4 and Nintendo Switch. Zombie Derby on PS4. Oh, sorry, not PS4, PC. Zombie Derby on PC, Phantom Trigger on PS4, PS4 and Xbox One, and Wolf Tales for PC. So that's it for me today, guys. Thanks for sticking around. If you have any questions, concerns, or even if I'm just wrong, you can reach me at that <laughs> at Jackasaurus on Twitter, or you can email me. And you have a good chat at gamification at outlook.com or you can come hang out with us at our Facebook group, The Gamification, where we just talk about all sorts of weird things. There's a lot of just me posting videos and um, other pictures and whatnot. Uh, but I'd love to have a chat with you guys. Thanks again. Uh, please like and subscribe to the video, hit the notification bell because I even I don't know when these videos are going to be coming up. And thanks for joining in. End of line.